Yeah, hello and welcome. Uh, just about to start Cuban. Uh, pick one with Sheldock Isle. I've been doing this a lot, picking like a blue spell first and then seeing Noble Hierarch second. Uh, I also really like to ferry. Pardon. I just have to fix that. Probably be to ferry three here. So you can go, you can come back and here we go. The other options, yeah, I uh Thalia is really good, Treetop Village, Scarab God. Um, Noble Hierarch, Frexy Metamorph, all really good picks. But uh, I'm going to take Teferi, Teferi 3. City of Brass is just like good. It's worth playing in any two color deck, so. Could certainly pick that up. Guys, the Sentry Draft is on color, I suppose. Timely, fantastic sideboard card. It's main boardable, of course, but, um, you know really shines in specific aggro and mid-range matchups. Of which there's a lot. There's a lot of aggro decks. And the aggro decks are good. It's probably better than Geist to Sentry to be honest with you. But if I pick Geist, I sort of establish myself in blue white a bit more. The Geist is fine, I'm not I don't think it's that good. Maybe we should have got a Noble Hierarch. Let's take City of Brass. Seven One Drops is good. I lost to, like, Esper Aggro last night. No. <laughs> yeah, Esper Aggro with Kithians and Hound of Isamara and stuff like that. This cut's good, cuts down, I think. I think it's good. Or Urza, uh, uh, also pretty decent. Gadwick's a pretty sweet magic spell. And nothing in blue white, really. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Unless so we're playing Blint. Let's grab a Farseek. Grab a Taran. And this is our first pack. So not a Autumn Wield. So not really much blue. To be honest, we got Shelly into Fairy. Gadwick's pretty heavy blue. It's hard to splash this guy. It's a great card though. Just like three for a three three is really good. Four for a three three that draws a card. And obviously the versatility that you could just like dump ten mana into it. Like even if you're able to, like I was playing that um, cascade, that blue green cascade spell, which was surprisingly decent. I thought it would be bad. You have to really have genuinely have an opening with it. I don't think it's a great card, but it's certainly playable. It's like the two three that the first spell you cast cascades, sort of not quite cascades, but almost. Anyway, the point is I cascaded into Gadwick, and I was like, yeah, free three three. I'll take that, you know. It's a tree top village wield. This card's phenomenal. It is arguably the best man land. I, you know, arguably. Mishra is um, being being some, uh, something that can block as a 3-3 three, three and only costs one to activate. Definitely stakes a claim. So we've got three Bant cards here. I'm tempted by the Corsa.
kind of don't want to take time if I am going to start going a few creatures but I'm also concerned about picking any sort of double I'm going to take blade splicer because just because if I'm picking a lot of creatures the timely gets a little worse and the course is just green green and if I'm trying to play triple if I end up playing cutting the blue which is very likely I'd rather courser there but place place is fine and um yeah it's definitely better in a triple color deck just because it's a lot easier to cast and having to get double green on turn one <clears throat> so that's annoying none of the lands in our colors I really just would not ever play that Garuk. Let's take... Yeah, okay. This Nissa actually impressed me a little bit. I would never usually pick it up. But I lost to it a little while ago. I had a really good hand and I had a good board. And they just had like a turn, turn 3 Nissa in the play. And I could just never get through the jump blocking the plants. Like I had a... I had like a 5-5 scavenging ooze all game and I just kept... Like could never connect with the Nissa. I was kind of surprised. Could play junk and take Kai's guy. Oh, Kai's guy was phenomenal. It's just a really perfectly, perfectly flexible card. Very flexible and powerful too. You know, I mean, what else do you want? Flexibility and power. You know, you can just absolutely crush someone if you're playing against like aggro and you go like sack your, you know, one of your three creatures, gain four life, it's phenomenal. Make a chump blocker, exile someone's bin, and just the raw power of being able to tap out to do all four modes, it's really good. I don't like Ewit here, I think Ewit's a bit of a trap if you're not playing fetches. Uh, Elishon's actually decent. The treasure map is just a card I would basically always play. This is the card I was talking about, by the way, the uh, blue-green Cascader. Whenever you cast your first spell, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a non-land card, you cast it without paying the mana cost, and otherwise you put it into your hand. So the cards I'm really looking at here are, there's actually a lot. Jade Light Ranger I really like. History of Bonalia, I'm, I'm not going to pick it, but an absolutely playable card. Definitely, you know, not too good to play that. Scavenging Ooze, one of the better green spells. Although without Reanimate and Storm in this format, it's not quite as good as it is in Vintage Cube. Then we've got Green White Manland and Avacyn's Pilgrim. So it's really the toss up is between these two Pilgrim and uh, Wildwood. And I think Pilgrim's better, but not by heaps. Not by heaps. Pilgrim's, Pilgrim's better. Hoof. Just play Ramp. Green White Ramp. I've already got a few rampy sort of cards. We missed that uh, Kadama's Reach earlier though. I'm gonna take the Goose. Um, Set of the Wreckage and Charming Prince also cards I would be happy to play. But they don't like entice me. I haven't played with or against this Elspeth, so I don't really know how good it is. The Escape for 6 seems pretty strong. It seems like a little bit underpowered, but then it's got that Escape for 6. Kind of makes it cool. Let's take Tristani. I think Tristani is actually like a bit of a secret good card. The random last ability at the beginning of your hand step, each player gains control of all creatures they own. There's so much stealing in this format. It's actually like, can just be a massive blowout. Someone like Sour of Temptations you and you just gotta like untap Tristani. Just absolutely blow them out. It's really hard to recover from. I'm gonna take Nissa. Over a Knight of Reliquy. Knight's just not a good spell. In this format. Overrun is such a raw power and can definitely win games. It's just a bit of a high risk card. I don't like a card in my hand that's only good if I've already... Like in, it's only really good in one very specific board state. Which is, you have a lot of creatures... and you're not winning the game. Like they have blockers or you need to kill them that turn. Because if you've got a lot of creatures they don't have many creatures, you can just swing over three turns and kill them. So it's only good if you are going to lose in the next like two or three turns, you know? Does that make sense? 
So I don't think it's very good. Cavani? Yeah. Probably has to be Cavani. I need some good stuff. I like all of these cards. None of them blow my mind. But uh, they're all good. Carnage Tyrant's probably the best of them. But my curve's already pretty high. I think we're just not playing blue, right? It's, uh, this is one of the blue. There it is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Slot of Hand. It's, it's, we, we could play with Slot of Hand. But I think two color decks are usually the best. That's not entirely true, but you've got to be pretty lucky to get a perfectly rounded out three color deck with all the lands. Let's take Carnage Tyrant. Ugh, maybe Slime. They're both sort of similar, they're definitely main boardable. I really hate Eternal Witness. Let's take Kyle. Um, they're both main boardable, but they're also really good in like a sideboard strat. Yeah, I like Jade Light Ranger, but Stirring Wildwood's just a no brainer. We want to be hitting dual lands anyway, and it's a man land. And this is a good man land. Three mana for seven total power and toughness. Is that like the most of any man land? Might be. As far as like how much you're investing. So hoof wield. We don't have to play hoof, but getting hoof there really gives us the opportunity to now in pack three just pick up a bunch of dorks and like cultivate. And, and just play like a ramp strat. We can like switch to ramp. It's pretty much uh, dead. Before Primus, I guess the same logic as the hoof. Not quite as good as the hoof. But, uh, okay, another one. Why would you need more mana than, why would you need that? Beast Whisper, okay. I don't love Beast Whisperer, but certainly playable. Stony Forge Mystic. Well, I think that's probably just the pick, right? Certainly don't have any um equipments. I was gonna say artifacts. We don't have any equipments. But um Yeah, well, it's just a fantastic spell if we can get them. Isn't it? Bird's Paradise? Pretty easy pick, to be honest. Um, Smuggler's Copter is definitely playable. I would play Approach of the Second Sun. The card's actually really good. It's like weirdly good, right? I don't. I'm looking. I don't really play standard. I don't know, draft standard, but I assume it's not playable in standard. But it's weirdly good in limited. So we're hitting a few of these dorks. I'm really liking how this is working out. We can play this ramp strat maybe. I think dorks don't really aren't the ideal cards for ramp. You want to play like Hedron Archive, Cultivate, Kadama's Reach, Oracle and Will Die, Garuk. Those are like the ramp spells. Like Faith Fitters is a good card for the sideboard against aggro. Flicker Wisp is perfectly good, very good in this format. I think I might just take the Confluence though. Lanawar Elves and Green White Land and a Goyf. Hmm. So we're relying on the Green White Land to wheel. It's definitely better than Lanawar Elves. Well, not definitely, but I'm assuming it's going to wheel, Lanamar is less likely to wheel. I think this card could be good. I also really like Forsake the World. Like, it exiles, it's instant speed, it hits both artifact and enchantment. Uh, it exiles instead of destroys, so you can hit like those, there's that like Heliod guy, there's the, you know, like Keranos in this format and stuff. And you can cycle it. The card's actually really good. Might even wheel. As in, sorry, Jamokas might wheel if I take for sake. Dante Vanguard's also really good. I'm gonna take the charm. Let's take it 
cost. Green white land. This deck's not quite. <laughs> it's good. I like the deck. I'm happy with it. We got some great things going on. It's not quite mid range. It's not quite ramp. Not quite sure where it is, but um, I think it'll be effective either way. Just really hoping. I th I'm not sure. If, I wasn't looking out for which swords have already gone. But I think Feast and Famine and so far we haven't seen. That doesn't mean they weren't snapped up, but we haven't seen. Neither have we seen Batterskull. If we can just get one equipment, Sword of War and Peace is basically the only sword I wouldn't play, and that's already gone. If we get basically any equipment, I will play it. I think Light and Shadow is also already gone, and that's like the next worst one. Like, in my opinion, the best is Sophie. Sort of Feast and Famine. Sort of body and mind. Sort of body and mind is actually probably a bit better than Feast and Vermin in this format specifically because there's not much this sort of light and shadow. And a den protector, let's just take this. There's not that much, there's a lot more blue green creatures in this format than in like modern or legacy or whatever. And the mill is like super, super relevant. Like basically there's a very good chance you can mill them if you connect once and you basically win the game if you connect twice so you know so pressure the second sun as I said very castable spell very playable I would actually I would probably take it here if I didn't already have so many so many big critters I'm kind of tempted Go seventh in the bottom. Let's do it for a bit of fun. A bit of fun. Wouldn't normally pick it to be honest. Um, Ronus is fine. It's fine. You can definitely lose to Ronus. You know, on paper, it's a perfectly decent spell. Three mana for a five-five. Death Touch indestructible, but you got to work kind of a bit harder to make it worth it. But if you get it, it's good value for money. You know. I just don't want to take the risk. It's just not worth the risk to me. You know? Like, it can win games, but so can a Thrun. And I can always rely on Thrun to be good. It's kind of... Like, Thrun's going to be good in almost any sen setting. Rhonus is, like, only good in very specific settings. I'd rather just not take that risk. So we don't need blue. So seven... Oh, we don't want more than 13 lands. 15 lands... Another green, 16 lands, 3 cuts, just a Hydra could be a good spell, not quite sure how good it is, uh, Kai's Guile, we didn't have black in the end. Just give us black. Okay, so we've got a little bit of a ramp thing going on. We can just win a game. We've got a very big top end. Um, but we do have a lot of dorks and a Farseek. And like a random Nissa, Vastwood, whatever. Uh, we can stall out, hopefully. Probably the thing we're lacking is... Um, like a Path to Exile or... No, something like that. Like a way to interact. Especially if we're trying to stall to the late game. Because you can you can ramp to the late game or you can stall to the late game, you know. Control typically stalls the late game and green typically ramps the late game. We're not quite ramping. We've got a little bit of ramp, but we'd have to it's not it's not a consistent ramp. What could I have taken over approach? Harmonize. I mean, that's probably a better pick, to be honest. But, uh, it's a bit of fun. It's a bit of fun. I mean, I could cut Approach, Crater Hoof, Woodfall, and play Ismaru, Declaration, Overrun, and, like, cut Beast Whisper and play Ronus, and suddenly it's, like, a very aggressive deck. So there's versatility. I mean, I could even do that. Play that and like, play. M it's a shame my green, but I'm gonna keep it. It's lines and spells. Um, 
Yeah, I could even do like the aggro. They just skip their turn. Yeah, they just skipped their turn. It's pretty brutal. They multi six and then just pass turn. Oh well, I'll take it. Yeah, like play aggro, sorry, game one, and then like game two when they don't want to be, don't want to do that anymore. Like what sideboard is if I'm aggro? I like bring in credit and stuff. What's this cut do? Prevent all damage against and sorcery spell would deal. They second enchantment. Plus one counter on some idiot. Idiot fight. Alright, let's hope they don't um, have a sweeper. Not really many three mana sweepers. Scoops. Whew. So black with one knight's whisper. There's a mono black deck out there. It could be mono black. Knight's whispers. I picked that up in the mono black deck. The mono black deck typically doesn't have too many two drops. Wow. <laughs> Here we are. Check out the timer. If you're watching on YouTube, I would have surely cut cut that bit. cut that bit out where we were just waiting but I, I didn't look at the time myself but uh, definitely just made us wait for ages I'm not going to do the same to them but I'll give them a little question mark see if they're going to apologise or whatever I'll be waiting a while um, let's mull this keep this one we'll sink the soiled so done. Mm -hmm. Off to the races we go. Are they mad because like I didn't skip my turn as well? That's why you dropped the sword. So it should just compass them anyway. Like they're very high high power level, but to be honest, they're a good late game spell and they're good at breaking comes up boards because you can just like attach your worst creature to a sword and it becomes your best creature and then swing and trade and then like keep doing the same thing. That's why I saw it as good. Among other reasons. So... On one hand we could be matter efficient and play Nyssa. On the other hand we could play our best spell which is Stoneforge. Or we could ramp... So I've also got the choice there to ping... Pain ourselves... And swing Lanawa. So we each take one. But generally I think I am going to be faster than this black deck like we're a bit more aggressive but just because we've got the City of Brass generally we're going to be tapping at it quite a bit so we're going to be hurting ourselves so I'll try to sustain my life total as much as I can did they miss another land drop? no, we far seeked Duh. It's really annoying. I think they give us too much time in Moto. I mean, I've definitely timed out before, but not very often. I can't remember the last time I've done that. I've played bad because I've been under pressure from time, but it's been a while since I've like genuinely timed out. So we can do both now. So we'll start with Nissa. And yeah, Jarrell's actually, like, doesn't mean you're playing aggro. But it's actually a very aggressive card. It's a power, plus one power over its toughness. It does like four damage ETB. And you're happy to like swing, like just swing into things. So very happy to have a chump blocker there. Yes, we'll take one from City of Brass. And we'll play this. And we'll get a pro black sword. 
And it's pretty interesting. I only saw them play one spell, and I actually put them on mono black. <laughs> I mean, it could, you know, any deck could really play Night's Whisper, but for some reason I was just getting a bit of a mono black vibe. You know, Night's Whisper's mono black deck really, really wants to snap that up. Because it lacks two drops, and it doesn't have many, like, good two for one sort of. You know, it's got, like, Kalidus. Like, it's not. You can get, like, val two for one value out of it, because you can make zombies, but, like, you know, not consistently. Okay, so they thought to take sword. That's obviously very good for them, um, because the sword would crush them. But it's okay. Like we still traded one for one. Um, you know, we as in we ended up with a one-two after after all is said and done. And I'm just gonna, we could just take it. And then it makes our sort of Nisser, I guess, our Neg Nisser ability a bit better, and our Gavany better. But I just want to sustain the life total. Okay. Yeah, it's good. That's a good play, actually. Because if I knew they were swift ending, I wouldn't have done that. So we've got six. So it's not impossible to hoof. <laughs> Two, three. Um. Let's just sustain the life total. Four. Kind of. I'm pretty happy to trade Stoneforge there. I think the pros to trading are we sustain life total a bit. The cons are it makes our Gavany a lot worse. Okay. Well, now I won't trade. It's kind of getting out of hand a little bit. I think we're just on the Gavany plan. If I can get like my Stoneforge up to a uh, a four three, sorry, a four five, sorry, <laughs> a three four here, and block giraffes. Ooh, if not expect is good. Yeah. Nice. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, I don't really want to get spected. So let's just cast it. It's a lot of damage. Um, it's 14 damage exactly, so they'll have to block. But the problem is they can block with Giraffe's Messenger. We'd go to 10 from the ETB, and then they swing back 7, 8, 9. It's actually not lethal. And they lose another life. I think we swing out, because it's, it's not lethal. On the just they so they have to block. They'll probably block with giraffes, which absorbs two. They take one from Midnight Reaper. So that if they block with giraffes, they'll go to one. But then we will also go to one. Okay. Triple block. Uh, so it does all the damage anyway. But let's order it like this. Let's order it like this. Interesting. Yeah, I would have just blocked with only giraffes. Cons are one. Con yeah, maybe they just didn't do the maths and they assumed they were getting lethaled. Because they were calculating for the Midnight Reaper deaths. But if you don't block, you don't get the deaths. Yeah, I would have just gone to one. Because they lose trample. The hoof loses trample after this. So you can just jump it. You can take me to one. And then, like, try to, like, draw. Yeah, like a Vampire Nighthawk. Would have done the job. Oh, right, well, you'd need another blocker. You'd need one more blocker. But you also don't have to. Oh, well, there you go. You would have had lethal. You would have had lethal. So, let's obviously play this. I do want to play treasure map. Um. But. 
just want to swing. I don't want the Vampire Nighthawk to just start connecting. Mm-hmm. No point Kevining. Yeah, I don't want the Vampire Nighthawk to just start connecting there. It'll get out of hand and it's gonna be really hard to close them off with a Nighthawk. <laughs> Freezing Obliterator? Yeesh. Forest. No, I don't think Forest will do it. Pretty good. So we can just actually do it now. Probably could have done that without paying life. But that's alright. We're going to be activating the treasure map anyway, so. It's really interesting with City Brass, you can have it on the stack either way. Like you can cast the spell and then tap the mana, or you can tap the mana, let the trigger resolve, and then cast the spell with a floating pool. It's a very interesting sort of little little card. Try it out, it's very obvious on Moto how it works. If you ever play more modern ad nauseum, it's really relevant because you need to float the ping damage on the stack and then like win. If you're on like one life, which happens all the time because you're Angel's Grace, if you're on one life, you can like Float the ping damage. Yep, so Rider Resolves. We've still got five cards in hand, but uh, we've got a Mainland, we've got a Gavany, we've got a Treasure Map. Um, that's just a random creature, I'll take that. They're on pretty low life, so are we, and they've got a Life Linker, so. So, one, two, three, four. Just cast it. Land. I'm happy to just trade creatures off here. Hopefully our treasure map can get us back in the game. See how tree tops now. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I'll see if I can do it the other way, show you guys how it works. So they got a one, can't uh, push, sure. Once again, happy to just trade off. I mean, I've got to do it at some point. I can't really aggro them, and even if I could, well, that's the way to aggro them, so. Just gonna use up the resources. Uh, yeesh. They uptick, okay. So they can down tick, get your Ralph's messenger. Seems pretty good. Oh, Vampire Nighthawk. They probably wouldn't get Midnight Reaper. And this. Move all counters from target permanent. Wow. That I'm fine with. Why would you not want to keep a 2 2 first striker? That presents lethal next turn. Seems really wrong. Who cares if I flip this? So Thrones also can regen if I want to tap City of Brass. Yeah, that seems really wrong. I would not have sacked that. Like, I can flip it and get a bunch of mana and a scry. But, whatever. You're like slowing the game down. Like Treasure map flipping there is good for me. But it's only good. I don't know. Taking taking the counters off is only good if you're going to like kill me soon. And you can't kill me soon if you're sacrificing your own creatures. Eat to extinction. So they'll probably get your Ralph's messenger. That's what I would get since... It like ETB does two, and then yeah they got it. So ETB does two, and then if I want to block it, 
and trade with it, it's going to do another two. So I'm kind of like stooped into it. Alright. Let's go. It's going to be a good one. Wildwood's probably not going to cut it. I think we need it oust there. Like even oust, I think loses because they can net, they they draw it off the Phyrexian Arena and they can lily it to get it back as well. So Pilgrim's actually not awful because it blocks the giraffes without trading with it. The problem, the problem, the problem is the lily can uptick ping it, so we kind of want to kill the lily. But they're on six, so I'm like very tempted to just swing six at them. Um, they're on, I guess, pseudo eight. That's really annoying. Because I can also Gavany. Like I want them to block with Murderous Rider so that the Murderous Rider doesn't swing into me. But I probably can't do that. Like I need to get rid of Lily and Murderous Rider this turn. And if I don't get rid of Murderous Rider, I can leave Thrun back. But like, so like if I swing Slime at Lily, they will just block. Then the Lily kills the Pilgrim. If I swing both at Lily, there's a chance they just don't block. In which case I lose. If I swing both at them, then they block the Thrun. So the Rider dies, but the Lily stays around. So I need them to block with Murderous Rider and trade, and I also have to kill Lily. figured it out. I figured it out. If we Gavany the Pilgrim, then the Lily can't kill it. So we play Pilgrim. We Alpha Strike them. They block with Rider. We Gavany go to one. And then we No, we need a Gavany in response to the Lily. Because if we Gavany, then they just swing. Yeah, we can't Gavany now. <laughs> That's pretty funny. We have to Gavany in response to Lily Ping. Because if we Gavany first, they just don't Lily Ping. And then the Pilgrim will trade with the Giraffe. So we Gavany now. That's really funny. Go to one. Like, if we lose, we lose. But I'm pretty happy that we, like, found that out. Haste. Okay, sure. Well, we lost. But i got to say, that's that was a good play, right? And I think we probably... I mean, they had a lot of cards in hand, but there's a good chance we would have got there. We had a decent board. We had Gavany. We had a treasure map. Um, one of black and it's 1-1. One, one. Mm, it's not great. Should chat. Nothing. They did have the arena, so that's a good Dramokus Charm target. Brass. You can see the brass hurt us a little bit there. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> that was a good game. That was a really good game. Much better than the first. They did well. I mean, we had a... I think we had a... Do we have a turn one door? No, oh, maybe not. I can't remember. Uh, I think we had, like, a pretty decent hand. I mean, we cast a Crater Hoof Behemoth. Can't really complain. This hand's really bad, but we got four lands and three spells. You can't ship it. Wildwood? Yeah, I'll play that. 
probably not heaps I need to be I mean I don't have any creatures to put counters on or fight they're not going to play any any random things so this guy's got menace um, this is a tough one I could try to wait and get value out of my knight I could play it and then like it also is slightly better arguably because I can beast whisper and then cast the knight or I could just get like a 4-3 out I might just get a 4-3 out yeah I'll just get a 4-3 out Pike sale, take Dramoka. This guy's good, I like the Gloom Sleeve. It's like a... It's like a slightly worse Bob. It, it is a worse Bob. Bob is a better card. But it's a little bit safer than Bob. Because you only lose one life. Um, yeah, it's a good card. 2-1 Menace, it's like aggressive and... Probably get at least a draw out of it. So let's go, Beast Whisperer, swing four. I think they had a fatal push, so they could just like jump with Kaitel Freebooter, push the Beast, but I think that's okay. We take the push out of their hand, we get the Jamoka back. <coughs> Like, they get a draw here, but it's basically just like a 2 for a 2 1 that draws a card now. Like, it's good, don't get me wrong, but it's not crushing just yet. Yeah, so this is. If I'd waited and, like, done the other way where I played Beast Whisper at turn 4, it would have got eaten anyway, and then I'd just, like, untap and have this knight in my hand. So I'm happy I just played the knight out. Just don't have much, um, much gas, though, because they've drawn a card. And they're on the draw. That's a very, very good draw. It's a shame that they had an exile effect and not a destroy effect, but uh, I'll take it. Uh, they thought seized my sword last time, dude. That, we we were doing well. I mean, we had a good hand. That's right. We had um. We had uh. We had Stoneforge Mystic, didn't we? In that last game, and they thought seized the sword out of our hand. It was a really good game, actually. But Mono Black I basically has no way to deal with a sword. I mean, I might eat my words, but in the entire game of Magic, Mono Black really struggles with, with artifacts. Gate to Phyrexia is like one of the only cards, you know? Could be like a Oblivion Stone, but really they're going to struggle, and they're also going to struggle to deal with the Knight because I mean they can make me sack and stuff this ways, but they're going to struggle to deal with the Knight because the Knight is pro black, and they're going to struggle to race because I'm gaining three as well. Did they just mind shatter me for one? It seems really loose with the sword, right? It seems really loose with the sword out. Let's just get the damage on. I could hold up cast out there but I'd rather just crush crushing for nine present lethal next turn via two creatures gain a bit of life and have cast out for us for like something next turn that I really really want to beat yeah mine shadows in blues because they'd already seen my hand with the kite self rebooter Unless they saw my hand with Collective Brutality and saw there was nothing there. Let's have a look. <laughs> they can get a 1 with Gun Sleeve, sure. Game two was really good. Yeah, the mind shadow was weird. Either you hit a creature, which I didn't get back with sword, or you just hit dumb lands. 
They might. They probably, I think they even just knew my hand. Whatever. Um, at least they wasn't doing anything else. That was a sweet game too, though. I felt very far ahead. I felt very good. We were getting two for one value. We were pressuring life total. We weren't sacrificing value. Um, you know, we were conserving our own life total without sacrificing value. They played it quite well. They, they had a few mistakes, I think. I'd have to go back and look. But I really liked that uh, Swing Giraffe's Messenger and then Hero's Downfall once I blocked. That was good. Because I certainly wouldn't have blocked otherwise. The Lily Neg get back the... I think the one play that was really awful was that Vampire Hex Mage. They definitely shouldn't have done that. Just keep the 2 one. Like, what's the treasure map going to do? Like, get me mana and draw me an extra card that'll probably find, like, an oust which kills the Vampire Hex Mage anyway, you know? You might as well just keep the Vampire Hex Mage to do the damage. Anyway. It's a good hand. We've got uh, two dorks. Three mana, one of which is man land, and one of which is a fast land. We've got a random, just generic spot removal, catch all spot removal, and we've got like gas, right? Like Stoneforge just is gas. So, um, yeah, very happy with this hand. Probably looking at Stoneforge doing Wildwoods. Leave with a stone forge. Yes. The other option is to break planes and play Bob. Maybe that would have been better, actually. Then I can get to five this turn and just go sort of quick. Yeah, that would have been better. Hmm. Uh, I guess we play around counter spell here though at least, so we can just like play. Bob pass the turn. Keep up so so sort of light and shadows, souls, souls. Keep up souls. <laughs> the other sort I don't think have names because they're not as good. Sophie, right? Sort of fire eyes. That's the only real abbreviation I know. And I coined Swappy, sort of one piece. I like Swappy. Alright, let's uh, go for one of these. Pretty happy that, in fact, I didn't play the birds. I'm happy to be a bit more patient and play around the counter spell. And this is a decent position to be in. Um, so I can equip Stoneforge Mystic, and they have a kill spell or something, and then I just equip my dorks, and then every single dumb one one I cast is a threat. I probably should have played land there so that I can cast out in response to something. Like, I don't think there's much, but, you know, whatever. Stein, ice, ice Fang Coil or something, I don't know. I don't think it's in this format. Uh, I probably won't play Pilgrim. I'll just play around. I'll just keep up Cast Out. Not that there's much I want to cast out. Um, but I'll keep up Cast Out, and I won't overload the board, just in case there's a Languish or a Damnation or something. And, uh... With the sword, I want to be able to go like untap, dork, equip, and now it's a new threat. It's like, ugh, every dumb little one when I cast is something I have to deal with. And then I can start getting those creatures back. Because we're quite far ahead, so I don't want to just overextend. Sour. Well, this is something I want to cast out, so that's good. Takes Bop? What the hell? Takes Bob? For real? I can almost just ignore that, right? Or are they expecting it to get killed? I'm confused. Are they expecting the Sour to get killed? So they'd want to take like something I can chump like Why would you not just take the Stoneforge Mystic? I don't think I actually want to cast that out. I think I'm happy to just swing into it. Is that crazy? Ow. 
oust. I don't even want to oust it. I can oust my own critter. Dude, I don't even want to oust that. Let's just get some damage on, huh? Is that crazy? I, like, I might kick myself. Because if I lose to tempo, like, it, it would be a good tempo play to cast out there. Because I use my mana, and I get the bot back, and they have, like, two less chump blockers, and I just, like, crush. But as far as value town goes, they're not really getting much value, because all our creatures are better than their creatures. We're winning the race by a margin. And now we safe cast out for a threat that actually wins. <laughs> so it's only bad if we get tempoed. We could oust our own creature, but I don't even care about the pop that much. Unless they're trying to build up to something. It's weird. It's really weird. I don't want to put it on my library though, because I don't want to top tick it. <laughs> I'm just gonna let it happen. Alright, let's see what happens. That's weird, man. Hopefully, the pro black's putting in a bit of work. I hope they're gonna fade a push. I think they must have taken Bob for two reasons. One, they're trying to build mana to like a Grave Titan or something, you know, and try to race. Um, or like a Frost Titan. Two, they don't want to take Stoneforge because it's still my sort of Light and Shadow, and I can just A, re equip, or B, if they swing, it's my sword. So whenever Crypt Creature does combat damage to a player, that could be me. I gain three life and I return a critter. See what I mean? So like they don't actually like the creature can't really swing. So it can't swing and then I can just recoup when I'm ready to swing. Solemn. Okay. Again, like it's good. Exile's kind of good, up some drawing, I suppose, but they've already got value out of the ETB. Don't know how worth it it is. It could be a very different game if I'd cast out this hour. It could be a very different game, you know? It could be a very different game. Because then I could oust the Solemn, you know? Ousting's not that aggro, though, because they do gain three life. So I don't really want to oust the Solemn. I kind of might just be happy to trade. What I might do... Is that... They could double block Stoneforge, I suppose. Double block Stoneforge is pretty good. And then we kill Sour, though. I'm going to do this. My other option was to swing Stoneforge. They double block, we cast out the Solemn. Then they lose the Sour. That's pretty good. They don't draw... We don't lose Stoneforge. We get back our Bob. But uh, I'm going to do this one. Just swing both. Accept the trade with the Stoneforge if they want to double block it. And then just re-equip. Re-equip the following, like re-equip to the Lino Arms. Okay. So, yeah, we will kill Sour. Um, sure. Sure. So again, I could play Pilgrim there, and I was very tempted to, because now we've lost a Bob, and you know, like, it's kind of not as good for them to sweep, but I still want to play around the Sweeper since I've been playing around it. And if I start to connect with Stoneforge now, um... I'll get back to my Bob and get some value. It's, it's low value, but it's cut advantage nonetheless. Um, also, I can activate Treetop, equip it to Sword, get in for five, and it's Trample. So even if the Solemn blocks, I still connect. Um, get back my Bob, gain three, and do a bit of damage over the top. And if I hit a land, I could even just do that and re-equip back onto, like, Stoneforge Mystic. It's pretty good. Here we go. Five. Gear Hulk. Well, pro black. Pro black, so it's hitting the Lana Royals. Not, you know, still good, but. Uh, someone stays on blocks. We group a land. We could cast out the Solemn now.
has to have the song connect. I kind of just want to save it. Am I being crazy greedy? Am I being crazy greedy? Really hope they don't have condemn. Watch this. So we connect. Um, it's pro black, so the gearhawk can't block it, and gearhawk's got menace anyway. So, like holding back the stoneforge to block doesn't really work. We kill this solemn, which was gonna block stoneforge anyway. But this time we get to trigger our uh, Sword of Light and Shadow. So we gain three, which really helps us race this Noxious. Like, it's almost off the cards that they can really race us in the immediate future. Because they're on 29 life. And we get to replay a bop. And I'm very happy to just replay a random bop. You know? Let's just do these dumb little activate equip. We can use the mana, is what I'm trying to say, basically. We still don't get blown out by Sweeper. Um, we can use the mana because we want to activate treetop and equips and re-equips and might well, still want to cast out. Um, and yeah, I'm pretty happy we're just keeping this cast out in hand until we really genuinely need it, you know? It'd be nice. It'd be nice. And we probably would have got there if we cast out the sour, just as far as aggro, but you never know. Then they might have had the sweeper and just swept and it would be done. So that's good for us because our next turn is a really critical turn. And if they're, like, basically if you cast a draw spell, you can have a good turn. This turn, you know, they could cast a draw spell, draw spell, untap, play a land, play, you know, two, like a random blocker and then some random enchantment. They can have a good turn. But really, because they're three mana down, their next turn's going to be the better turn. I'm very right. So they can unbury... And they're playing Ashiok as well. It's good to know. So they can unbury all right Sour of Temptation here. They don't. Why don't they? Why don't they? That's the question. Well, we can't really lethal them. Can't really lethal them. So even if we cast out Activate Equip is still one, two, three, four, five, six, and they're on seven. Maybe we should play Pilgrim over Bob. <laughs> Let's just start with this. Nice and simple. They might have like Snap or something. Kind of surprised they didn't unbury rights. They've got to have something good. To not want to unbury your rights there. Blink the sword. Thinking. So we could cast out the Gearhog in response. Just to save our Stoneforge, basically. But I think I want to save the cast out for the Sour. I want to save out, save out the cast out for the sour. So we'll let that resolve. We lose Stoneforge. Then I think we just play Pilgrim and then play Sword Equip. So Pilgrim, Sword, and. Quit. Now we've got two removal spells, we've got threats on board and two removal spells. So hopefully they're going to be trying to cast creatures um, to remove ours, like Sour and stuff like that. We'll play blockers and we can spot remove that. The, the annoying thing to be honest is that Sour actually, even though we can deal with it, it kind of ruins our tempo. 
Because they can steal the pilgrim. And then the pilgrim's got summoning sickness. And then we so we then we cast it out. And then we have to like recruit the sword. To a different creature. Foff. So it's kind of similar to what we saw last turn, wasn't it? Where they cast cumulative compulsive research, sorry. So like search for as cancer is just like way too slow. Sense is really easy to play around. None of these cards are that good. Probably the best card is actually Thought Scour. Because it finds the better card. <laughs> you know? But I think they, they wanna they probably I'm gonna do it like that. They probably want to have the land drop as well. I can't remember. Have they played land? Uh, play Swamp. Okay, so they've already played land. So maybe that was a mistake. Um, but yeah, like they could go like Thought Scour on Burrow Rights. But they can't do that. I think that play is going to be on Burrow Rights. On Sour. Okay, so they took... They took Narset Thought Scour. And they get Doomfall. Target opponent exiles a creature they control. Or they can steal a card in our hand. And it's sorcery speed. Man, that seems really loose. Why would you do that? Does that seem loose to anyone else? So we can take them to one. know if I really want to oust this noxious gear help because they'll just get it back I want to oust the turn on winning if we cast out we can activate treetop and like slam them maybe that's what I want to do but still I'm scared of like a threat there I'll be pretty annoyed if I cast out being so patient on it you know and then I just like cast out on the gear help it's so like long term we can deal with this gear because it's black and we've got a sword. Thank you, Bobby. Easter. Happy Easter, guys. Like long term we can deal with this gear hulk. It's, it's not really that threatening as far as damage goes. It can't block. Am I just getting greedy because they're on seven? I can see the light. Hmm. I think I want to keep up cast out mana this turn to end of next to end of their next turn cast out. So I could play treetop, equip treetop to sword, swing for five, trigger get back land or else or something. I don't think the Narsons are that good. I think I can just ignore the Narset. Activate treetop. Activate treetop. Equip. Swing them. Like I could swing the asset, but I might as well start presenting some lethal. And they're going to get a card off the Narset, and we're going to get a card off the Sword anyway. Get Stoneforge, I guess. It's kind of this or that. Stoneforge is a 1 2. Lana White taps for mana. Keeping up cast out here. Even if I hit Lana I wouldn't want to cast it for the same logic. If they sweep, I want to be able to, like, like they could sweep and like whatever doomfall this treetop or something before it equips. So I just want to keep another card in hand. 
Targeting me. Seems bad if I've got a sword, right? Acidic Slime's pretty good. This guy's an artifact. Doubt I'll be connecting with sword again, though. Unless, like, I'll either be winning if I connect with sword again, so. Mass manipulation. Yeesh. That's a spell. So they can do that for two. So they can steal two creatures. Unfortunately for them, though, I've just got dumb dorks. You know? Ashiok, now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> well, now they're getting somewhere. They're not mass manipulationing, but I really want to kill them. Turn a non-land permit to its owner's hand, then that player exiles a card from their hand. It's not that scary, to be honest with you. It's really not that scary. I've got the mana to just recast it and equip, right? Oh yeah, tap out. Yum. Take a moment reveals their hand. Choose a non land card from it and exile it. Well, that's game, right? One, two, three, four. Because they want to steal the sword here. But uh, we don't need the sword if we're casting out. Because we're getting rid of their blocker. And we can just treetop village swing. Patience. That patience. We had this opening hand cast out. That was some ultimate patience. They've got a very slow deck. We could even aggro this. We could ch cut these things. Cut these three. Play Overrun, Ronus, Isamaru. Give that a go. Just to mix it up. Very patient. Very patient. I'm really happy with the patience on that cast out. Did it when we like we're gonna like tempo them to win the game, you know? Do it wait till there's a threat that we actually need to beat, or wait until we're gonna win the next turn. You know? Because we were getting value every time we swung. They were either chump blocking or we were connecting. So. Kind of did it the wrong way around. <laughs> really, we should be um, trying to play the aggro strat on the play. And the more defensive on the draw, but it's a good, decent aggro hand. We'll play this in next turn. Hmm. Rhinus is actually pretty good. Rhinus next turn. Then I can, like, pump and swing for an extra seven. It's quite a lot of damage. But it's bad if they have a, some way to kill me. Mm. Let's go Ronus. It's very similar to the sword in the sense that It makes every single one of my critters annoying. Annoyingly good. Because I can just pump. If I just get a mana dog or whatever in the late game, I can just pump it twice. And then swing for like 10. Do they just suck with sensor? Or they only had one up? Okay. This card's so slow, man. Search for a scanter. Bad card. Don't pick it. This is zero decks that want to play it. If you're in hard control, it's too slow for control. You mill yourself out. So, this creature can get big. This is why I wanted Anissa first. Because, but, um, cause but. Because. Now I'm like, 
all in on these two creatures, basically all in on the Isamaru. You know, like if they have Fatal Push here, the Isamaru just, like, ruin that ruins the whole turn. Wow, no Fatal Push. Uh, I think we just play Tree Top. That was a nice, solid slug, wasn't it? Does this guy have Trample? The Ronus itself? No, no Trample. The Tree Top has Trample. It was a big thwack. Now they're just on the back foot and they just have to play around basically anything, right? Like, instead of progressing their board here, they need to play around what if I treetop pump or something, you know? Gearhawk's a good one. Speaking of Gearhawk pump, we can't treetop and pump. So I think we'd just be a bit patient. We cast Nissa. We get ourselves a forest. Now that we're losing on board, we start loading up the board again, so that next time we're winning on board, particularly, so we've got a bunch of mana now, and we can just like Gavany, if we want to, so yeah, winning on board, we converted the winnings into damage, now we're losing on board, they haven't converted into damage, you know, so now we just regain the board again. See what I mean by search is very slow. I mean, we could lose the search here and I'll eat my words, but like generally speaking, this is the key turn. This is because, as I just said, they were winning the board. We were winning the board. We converted to damage, pressure their life total. Then they were winning the board. Now we're winning the board. So they need to win the board back, right? It's very hard for them to pay four mana this key turn to find an answer for that. Ballist is an answer. This is a good one. What do you do though? The ballista's gonna get blown out by this Gavany. Well, maybe blown out's the wrong word. Because they can ping a Gavany in response and then they ping ping in response. But uh, it's very good nonetheless. Hmm. It's not something they can play around. Like a lot of players will be like, oh, I'm gonna like play around this, play around this. Really hard, can't play around Gavany. And I think we can just Gavany, right? Treetop Village. Tap, 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 tap. Plus one counter everything. Nice. And now Treetops are 4 4, so every time Treetop swings, it A trades with Noxious Gearhawk and B switches on Ronus. It's pretty huge. Yeah, so they pinged again in response. I, I, I F6 through that, but what happened was um, they pinged Arbor Elf, I Gavanied in response, and then they pinged Arbor Elf again in response to Gavany. Worked out the same. It's just waiting for Gavany to resolve. But um, each opponent sacrifices a creature. Well, it's actually really tough. The Ronus is more powerful, but it's kind of cumbersome. And the Nissa is less cumbersome, but it could just—it is about to flip if I when I when I play inevitably play land next turn. 
But the problem is then I've got a Planeswalker and this um, Noxious Gearhog can kind of just deal with it. You know, like I can make a 4-4, four four, but I think it's Nessa. Just because I got that treetop. So we have one off going to stay. Let's, let's activate and swing. Like we could load the board up there. Uh, with Tristani. But kind of obliged to block this anyway so we're kind of getting value either way right they can um kithian by the way they can block the ronus block the ronus and indestructible it okay so it's weird they take three over the top take three over the top we could pump it and make them take five over the top, go to one. But I think we just play Nissa, especially with the Gavany. Right. We we just like free kill this Noxious Gearhog. Like we could take them to one, but then what? I'd rather just load the board up a little bit. Maybe we should have Nissa first and plus one countered. Mm, maybe that would have been lethal. If we'd gone Nissa plus one counter on everything. No, it wouldn't be. Yep, we just got a pretty good one. So what creatures are next? If they survive this turn, they can get back Noxious Gearhulk with Eldest Reborn. I guess that's why they blocked. And Tristani. Although, <laughs> they can't get Tristani because Tristani's own ability would give it back to me. That's what I mean. There's a lot of different ways you can... And see what I mean? Like... This is as counter as it's best. It was like played very early, it flips very early, it's activating to find an answer. It's still not good enough. It doesn't win the game, you know? It's just so slow. It taps you out. Yeah, like there's so many ways to steal. Eldest Reborn's another one. Story targeting champ. Let's just go. This. Well, I'll undo that and I'll do this one. There's basically no scenario where we have any here, and we swing probably lethal, right? Is it? Yeah, I think it's lethal. So green. Um. White. We want to put a plus one. Target player sacrifices an enchantment, put a plus one counter on target creature. So that player can sacrifice an enchantment, and I'll choose this creature, get a plus one counter. And then we get the pump to make it four. So this creature can get big. And there we have it. The Ronus can swing. That was a really good game. That was fun to play. I'm um, really happy with how I played it. It was really some really cool little like activate like twice I like activated the tree job and then like tapped it for mana to put the counters on with Gavany. It's really awkward for them. Sounds okay. The Tremokus command's not great early. Cause like <laughs> you know, you need a creature out for it to be good basically. And like you know, even if they lightning strike me on turn three, which is unlikely. Um, is it really worth making them preventing it? You know, two mana gain for your life? Nah.
Definitely slow hand against Burn, that's for sure. This is the finals, this is for the trophy. This has been a pretty good one either way though. Pretty happy with this. These my red decks are really strong, man. Really fast. Want to be hitting my? I'll probably lower the curve on this one as well. But uh, yeah, I really probably want to be taking out... I'll keep approaching the second summon, but I'll take out Woodfall Primus for sure. And probably Hoof. Add, uh, add Isamara and stuff. Not that I'm giving up just yet, but... This swing at four here, you know, it's pretty good. <sighs> Why couldn't I fire sick last? Uh, I'm going to play the creature. That way the Dromoka starts actually doing something. That's pretty good. They sacrifice an enchantment. It's pretty strong. I'll probably do that. Tiger Blade Sacrifice and Enchantment and put a counter on a creature. So they sacrifice an enchantment plus one counter on this creature. Green white. And then Far Seek. Connect. Fast turn. Hopefully, hopefully, whoosh, we can connect with Sword of Light and Shadow. Blades Blast. <laughs> okay. Okay. So this is getting cut. This is getting cut because Tristan is really good. Approach is good. Um, is American definitely come in? Probably not Ronas. It can't block. That's like all block. I don't like that. Maybe just this. So first of all, we just massively lower our curve because we take out two eight drops and put in a one drop and a two drop. So what the cards do, like even forgetting what what the cards do, just like that sheer drop in converter mana cost is huge, you know. Definitely want to get a land off the top. We are, like, our hand was shaping up a bit there at the end. So, sacrifice to make. They're unlikely to be able to act, use this Grim Love Mance anytime soon. Sacrifice to make a thing. Treasure map. Uh, stop on my turn. Like if they like the chance they can play two spells and also have a red up, so I'm not in any rush to kill this criminal love man, so really want to hit a land off the top. Dreadhold. I kind of just want to draw the land. pretty bad. We really need to land there so we can go like Nissa. Oh man, the computer heat is like melting them. Uh, yeah, I'll block a random dumb one three. Goose is actually kind of good. 
Oh, it's all melted. Because it's kind of good. Because you can like make food tokens again, life. Um. Hmm. First strike is good. Let's cycle this. How good is Night of Autumn? But we need lands. Come on. Come on, man. Give me a break. Alright. Doing my best here. Like, I've scryed, I've cycled. What more do you want? Played a Mana Dork. Give me the lands. The reason I'm not scrying an upkeep is because I want to hit three mana so I can cast a three mana spell. You know, I want to be able to play the Blade Spice or play the Nest there. Yeesh. Well, that's game, I think. That's game over. Yep, we lose. That's really annoying. Like, we we really wanted to hit land, obviously, off the top, but you'd think after going cycle cast out and scry, you'd think that would just be like a done deal, right? You'd, you'd be like, yep, that's a land. But we can't beat this. We've lost. It's frustrating. City Bryce as well, what a kick in the guts. Still got four cards in hand and a man land. So I get three Lotus Petals and then Tristani makes... Does that actually do it? I think this weirdly actually does it. Like, I still don't think we just lose. They've got tons of bolt effects and stuff, and we're on one, and we're very far from dealing with the board. Um, we're still going to lose, but this technically keeps us alive this turn. Alright, because we can block the chain weller with Tristani, block and trade with a meter vault, block a goblin. Yeah, wow. That was still uh, some pretty good games. Shame about that uh, ending, but yeah, they were really, really interesting games. And thanks heaps for watching.